arguments. The petitioners contended that the same disqualifications are provided for a person being chosen as a member of either House of Parliament or the State Assembly or Legislative Council of the State and for a person being a member of either the House of Parliament or the Legislative Assembly or the Legislative Council of a State. Therefore, the disqualifications for a person to be elected as a member of the either House of the Parliament or a member of the State Legislature and for a person to continue as a member of either House of Parliament or a member of the State Legislature cannot be different. To support their submission, they cited Election Commission of India versus Saka Venkatrao 1953 judgment which held that Article 191 lays down the same set of disqualifications for election as well as for continuing as a member. So, they submitted that subsection 4 of section 8 of the Act, which provides an opportunity for the sitting member to file an appeal against the conviction or sentence within three months from the date of conviction, is in contravention of the provisions of Clause 1 of Article 102 and 191 of the Constitution. They also submitted that during the Constituent Assembly debate, an amendment moved by one of its members, Mr. Shibbanlal Saxena, to insert the similar protection was rejected. Despite this, the Parliament has enacted subsection 4 of section 8 of the Representation of the People's Act 1951. On the other hand, respondents submitted that the validity of subsection 4 of section 8 of the Act has been upheld by the Constitutional Bench of the Supreme Court in K. Prabhakaran v. P. Jayarajan. They submitted that the purpose of the subsection 4 of Section 8 of the Act is not to confer an advantage on sitting members of Parliament or of a state legislature, but to protect the House. Raising their argument on the K. Prabhakaran case judgment, petitioners said that the disqualification will have two consequences. First, the strength of membership of the House shall stand reduced, so also the strength of the political party to which such convicted members may belong and the government in power may be surviving on a thin majority where each member counts significantly and disqualification of even one member may have a deleterious effect on the functioning of the government. And second, a by-election shall have to be held which exercise may prove to be futile also resulting in complications in the event of the convicted member being acquitted by a superior criminal court. For these reasons, the Parliament has classified the sitting members of Parliament or a legislature in a separate category and provided protection in subsection 4 of section 8 of the Act. The respondents also submitted that the reality of the Indian judicial system is that acquittals in in the levels of the appellate court, such as the High Court, are very high. The judgment. After hearing the arguments of the petitioners and the respondents, the Supreme Court held that the powers of Parliament to make any law providing disqualifications for membership can be located only in Articles 102 Clause 1 Subclause E and 191 Clause 1 Subclause E of the Constitution. A reading of the aforesaid two provisions makes it abundantly clear that Parliament is to make one law for a person to be disqualified for being chosen as and for being a member of either House of Parliament or of State Legislature. Therefore, the Court held that subsection 4 of section 8 of the Act is ultra wires the Constitution. Importance Criminality in politics or criminals sitting in the parliament and legislatures is an important issue that has been there for long debated. Previously, convicted MPs and MLAs were able to file appeals within the stipulated three months without giving up their membership and managed to remain MPs and MLAs often for long years. After the Lily Thomas judgment, while convicted MPs and MLAs still have the right to appeal, they immediately cease to be members of the House. The judgment will have a profound impact on cleansing our political system. Impact In an attempt to nullify this judgment, the Representation of the People Second Amendment and Validation Bill 2013 was introduced in the Rajya Sabha. 
It provided that there would be no automatic disqualification of MPs and MLAs upon conviction. However, this was later withdrawn. Since the judgment, some lawmakers have lost their seats after conviction.